In this video, I'm going to be discussing the similarities and differences between permutations and combinations. So, permutations are represented by NPR and combinations NCR. So, that's the notation that we use, and this is precisely uh, the notation that is used on your calculator. So, do take a moment to look at your Casio calculator and to find these buttons on the calculator. N denotes the, the total number of objects that you are working with and R denotes the, the number of objects that you are selecting. So in each case we are selecting R objects from N. Now it is important to note the conditions under which this selection is taking place. So for both permutations and combinations we require no repetition. So that is for permutations and for combinations. That's a no repetitions. So what does this mean? So for example, right, so I'm giving you an example for both of these cases. Uh, let's suppose that I've given you letters. So you're given letters A, B, C, D, F, G, and let's say L. Let's add L into the mix. Right, and I require you to select three letters. So create a three-letter word. Right, so that'll, that's what we want to do. Create a three-letter word or arrangement. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an English word. Right, so it can be any arrangement as long as we are choosing three. And for as long as no repetitions are allowed. So this then means that, for example, I could then form the word or randomly make an arrangement. Let's say I say F A um, okay, a three or four letter word, right? So let's go F A L L. Right, so in here observe that the letter L has been repeated, right? so that is not allowed. But for example, the three-letter arrangement B A G bag is allowed, right? So this is repetition, and repetition is not allowed. So this is what we mean when we say no repetition. So B A G, that three-letter arrangement is allowed, but here F A L L is not allowed, right? In addition. Now to mention a difference between permutations and combinations, when it comes to selecting, permuting by selecting uh, R objects from N, in this case we have that order matters. However, in combinations we have that order does not matter. Alright, so let me just create my table. Right, so on the left I'm talking permutation, on the right I'm talking combination. Right, so what do I mean when I say order matters? So just going back to that same example, we have our list of letters and we are allowed to make a three or four letter word arrangement. Right, so in a permutation, since order matters, then the three letter arrangement B A G and let's just say I make an arrangement G A B. So it's the same letters, but I've now rewritten those letters in, in different in different orders. Right? So these are different because order matters. In the first case, for example, B was in position one. But now in the second example, B is in position three. So here because order matters, position of the letters matter and therefore these two things are different. But in the case of combinations where order does not matter, then B, A, G and the combination G, A, B are the same. Right, so order does not matter, so that means the position of the letters do not matter because it's the same letters that's being used, which is A, B and G. Regardless of how they were ordered, the the, the combination of the letters A, B, and G will be the same. 
right? So you need to know the distinction between order matters and order does not matter, right? So when you've understood the distinction, then recall that n, p, r, so choosing r objects from n where order matters is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial and n choose r, meaning combinations, where order does not matter is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So these are the formulas to note. Now in general the question that is always asked here when it comes to permutations and combinations, you all, the question that's posed is in how many ways can you arrange objects or, or something to that nature but you're always trying to calculate the number of ways something can occur. Right, so when you are required to answer something of that nature, you you are either going to you are either going to be required to use a permutation NPR or a combination N choose R, right? But the question is now you need to decide which of the two is the correct choice. So you now need to have a checklist. So before you even use a permutation or a combination, you need to make sure that no repetitions. Are allowed so you need to ask yourself are there any repeats and then after you verify that no repetitions are allowed you then need to check does order matter because if order matters then you're using a permutation and if order does not matter you are then using a combination so very important to go through this checklist to determine which formula is required however there is a special case. It may turn out that we can have a permutation without repetition. Sorry, with repetition, my apologies. Right, so permutation with repetition. So of course now that means it's failing to satisfy the conditions I've set on that slide. So with repetition. So a permutation with repetition means that order matters, but of course repeats are now allowed. Right, so in this case, how do we tackle the question when you are required to still find out the number of ways objects can be ordered or picked or whatever the question is pertaining to? Right, so then if you are given n objects, right, since they are now repeats, because repeats are allowed, you need to now group your repeats. Right, so you then let n1 denote uh, the number of objects. So number of objects of type 1 n2 will then denote the number of objects of type 2, so we are grouping the repeats. So maybe you have three objects um, of type 1, so you've got three repeats of type 1. And then of course we will let nk denote the number of objects of type k. So of course, um, this must then satisfy the property that when you sum up all of your repeats, n1 plus n2 all the way up to nk, you must then get back the entire collection of objects, which is n. Right, so if this is the case and you're still required to permute uh, and find the number of arrangements or number of ways, then your formula now becomes, in this case, n factorial divided by the product of the factorials for each of those types. So n1 factorial times n2 factorial multiplied all the way up to n sub k factorial. Right, so important to note this formula. This formula could also be applied to the section on um, cells, so ordering with cells. Uh, so in that case, the cells could be thought of as a partition so you then find out how many objects do you want to place in cell 1 or partition 1, how many objects are going to be placed in partition 2, meaning type 2 or cell 2, up to nk. So nk objects to be placed in cell k or partition k. 
where the sum total must then give you n, and then of course you would be able to calculate the arrangements using the same formula.